Morning. As you all know, I love a bit of tech. Now, there's two types of tech that I see in this world. The first is the sort of technology that comes along that you didn't know you wanted or needed until you got it. These heart smart home speakers are quite a good example of that. Now I've got them. I don't know how I got on without them. They make my life a lot easier. The other type is where you take a, an existing product and you improve it. It evolves and you make it better, even though you thought that that product was perhaps the best it could be anyway. An example of that, that would be uh, the, the vacuum cleaner. We all know that vacuum cleaners work. They were very powerful. They sucked up dust and we were quite happy with them. Then along came Dyson and improved them. And he took what was a, essentially a very boring piece of technology and made it interesting. So if he can do that with vacuum cleaners, what else can he do it with? So as you've probably guessed, today I would like to speak to you about the EV that Dyson have said they are going to develop, and it looks like they're pretty serious about it. So let's start at the beginning. Who are Dyson? Well, you, you must be living under a rock if you've never heard of Dyson, because let's be honest, if you haven't got a product in your home that came from Dyson, you will know somebody who has, and uh, they'll be all around you. You probably used a, one of their hand dryers in a public toilet at some point in this, this week. Dyson started in 1991. They have effectively, they uh, design uh, and invent and then build uh, domestic products. So your vacuum cleaners, your um, fans, uh, hand dryers that I spoke of, they do a whole raft of different products that take very boring, very mundane things that we've used for a long, long time and makes them a lot better. Dyson was founded and is owned by James Dyson. Now, without going into all the history of how various companies were set up and devolved and uh, court cases, all sorts of bits and pieces that have gone on in his history. Basically, back in 1974, he was a young man with a, a Hoover and he realized it kept getting blocked and clogged, got very frustrated with it. Uh, being the inventor he is, he took it apart and realized that the dust particles were blocking the bag, which wasn't allowing for suction. So he had this in the back of his mind that he wanted to do something about it. At the same time, he was wor working on uh, large scale cyclone technology. He took that technology and uh, scaled it down, effectively using cardboard and sellotape, made a uh, scale model of it and realized that that cyclone technology could work in a much smaller unit. He put that unit into a vacuum cleaner and a very long story short, over 5,000 prototypes later, that he built in his shed, he came up with the first Dyson vacuum cleaner. And the rest is history. They've continued to invent and evolve. And uh, it's, for me, it's quite interesting, not just the products that have been successful, but some of the products that we haven't seen. And the reason I think that's interesting is because it gives us a bit of a clue as to why James Dyson has ended up wanting to produce an electric vehicle. Now, one of the big keys to this was a a uh, diesel par particulate filter that he designed, uh, got to prototype stage and had it working. The problem was that nobody wanted to buy it. That everybody was happy with the uh, ceramic filters that were being built and being put on diesel cars as it was. But this was using his cyclone technology to effectively uh, clean the diesel gases coming out the back of the car. So he, I think it's fair to say, was a bit upset that his product couldn't be launched to make the world a better place, which when you read more and more about uh, Sir James Dyson, what you realize is actually he's, he's very keen on looking after the environment. He wants our planet, our world to be a cleaner, greener place. And he very much sees the number one cause or one of the main causes that he wants to address is vehicles and vehicles, especially using uh, whether it's petrol or more particular, diesel. He wants to get rid of those and he wants an electric vehicle because he believes that is the way to make our planet a greener place. Now that brings us neatly onto the announcement he made in 2015, which was he wanted to design and build three electric vehicles. Now, he's been very clear that none of those is gonna be a sports car and they're gonna be quite expensive and quite heavily laden with technology. So very much like all his other products, let's be honest, they, um, they're all very different, uh, very unusual, 
and very much built without a thought to what's come before it. It's, uh, well, true invention, I, I guess, that people actually want things to evolve and things to get better, and that's what they do. So with a £2.5 billion investment and 400 employees working from a specific site in Wiltshire just to develop these EVs, that's what they've set about doing. And to this point, there is no working prototype. We haven't seen it, but some developments have been made. He's saying that ultimately by 2020, that first vehicle will be in production. He said it will be a, a low volume vehicle, probably 10,000 units, and that is designed just to be able to work out the supply chain, how it's gonna set up, how it's gonna work, and how it's gonna look. So what have they got so far that we can actually talk about? There's no chassis yet, but they have got a motor. And it's interesting that they've actually trademarked their motor. Uh, they've called it a digital motor. To be honest, it's not an awful lot different from any other electric vehicle motor, but they've trademarked it. And they've said that is gonna sit within the automotive industry. Yes, they've also trademarked it for their domestic appliances, but the fact they're talking about a digital motor for the car shows how far forward they are with it. Because they haven't just trademarked it, but they've said that that motor is now ready. It's up, working, ready to go. So that's good news. The other big thing is the battery. Now, right from the off, 2015, they were saying that the battery that goes into their car is gonna be solid state, because that's the future. That's what is gonna make electric vehicles move on from where they are at the moment. Give us that range we want. Give us that quick, efficient charging that we want. It looks like they might be just taking a step back from that now. And certainly at the moment, if you believe what you read, the first vehicle certainly will have a lithium ion battery, same as most other cars. But that's not to say that they're not developing that solid state. We know development continues because earlier this year they bought, uh, I think it's pronounced SAC T3, uh, a Michigan startup company who pretty much said that they have developed a working, very good solid state battery. They said it was uh, far superior to anything that even Tesla are putting into their cars at the moment. So they were quite confident. Um, 90 million pounds later, Dyson now own that company. So clearly they believe in that technology and they wish to make it work. Now, the reports I've read suggest that actually that battery hasn't been proven outside of the lab. Maybe it has in the meantime, and I'm sure a company like Dyson wouldn't just buy it if it was just any old startup. So I'm sure there's something in it there somewhere. And let's look forward to the future when we might be able to see the outcome of what they've bought. So that would be good news. But as I said, in the meantime, let's stick with the lithium ion. I think they just wanna get a car up and working and available and something that's reliable, because we, we know lithium ion works, and certainly by 2020, what have they, what have we got a year and a half, two years before it's released, that battery technology is certainly gonna stride forward way beyond where we are now, so that's good. And while we're on batteries, we can talk about what their plans are, because Dyson very much do everything in-house. So uh, whatever they build, they build themselves. They don't necessarily farm things out too often. They want to build the batteries themselves, so they are talking about a $1 billion investment into a factory to build the batteries. And they've said that wherever the batteries are built is where they're going to build the cars, because there's no point in shipping the batteries around the world to, put, to marry them up with the rest of the car. So that brings us on to where these cars are actually going to be built. And whilst he hasn't ruled out the UK, it's very much a British company that um, Dyson is, I think Again, because of the things that have happened in the past with Sir James Dyson and his feelings towards things like Dieselgate and the fact that people didn't invest in his uh, filters for diesel engines and looking to the, the Far East and how they have really made great steps forward and how they're very forward thinking about these things, and I'm sure there's some economical reasons as well, uh, he has hinted that perhaps the factories will be somewhere maybe China or somewhere like that, that uh, he feels more comfortable, probably from an economical po point of view and from an environmental point of view with their track record. So I think probably probably we'll see the, uh, the cars and the batteries being built elsewhere outside of the UK, which, well, let's be honest, a lot of stuff is, and it doesn't seem to cause us too much trouble. I don't think he's made any secret of the fact that he 
is very much, and I'm going to get a little bit political here, I don't like doing that, but uh, I believe he is very much into uh, Brexit, you know, the UK leaving the European Union, and uh, I think he probably is just sitting on the fence a little bit to find out how that unfolds. But at some point, he's got to make a decision, and um, we'll see. We'll see where that ends up. It'll be interesting, not just for his company, but for all manufacturing and all electric vehicles in the future, how they're bought, sold, and manufactured for the UK. But that's something for another day. Let's not get bogged down in politics here, shall we? So as it stands, Dyson have got uh, a stunning test facility in Wiltshire, a place called Hullavington, which is an old World War II airbase. It's not far from their main headquarters, which is around Malmesbury in, in the UK. They've built a 10 mile testing track there. It's now open. It's got all sorts of different uh, road types from motorways, A roads, B roads, real bumpy bits, fast sections. Uh, the way it's described, it sounds absolutely incredible. So they are really going to be putting their vehicles through the, their, their paces. When they were asked about uh, how far this technology is going to go, there was a few hints. So there's things that have been spoken about, things like the wiper blades. He said, why would you put wiper blades on a car? Because all they do is uh, they wear out over time, they scratch your windscreen over time. Could we use something like their air blade technology that we see in their hand dryers? So there was a bit of a hint as to what they were thinking about doing. But there does seem to be a limit, and that limit seems to be uh, full autonomy. Uh, one asked about uh, autonomous driving, and he describes it as hands-off driving. Uh, James Dyson said that we're not there yet. They, as a company, have he invested very, very heavily in robotics and all this sort of autonomous units to make manufacturing and different things work really well. He said that isn't going to happen in the car yet. It, um, we're just too far away uh, and he's not comfortable with it. So don't expect to see that in there yet, albeit they are talking about heavily laden technology in the cars. So we'll see what else is put, put in there. But it does sound like they're doing what they do with all their other products. They're taking what is essentially uh, an item that we use day in, day out. Probably didn't really see much reason to improve it and they're trying to improve it. They're trying to make it better for us. And I, I think ultimately, what we're gonna get is something that isn't a car. I've spoken before about how, as uh, new EV adopters, we've had to have effectively a car that is a lift from any other car. It looks the same as any other car. All they've done is taken the engine out and put a battery inverter and the motor in. Well, perhaps Dyson are gonna do something a little bit different again, because, they're not constrained with any history. They haven't got parts on the shelf that need using. They haven't had millions of pounds, billions of pounds of investment in certain chassis that they now need to uh, make use of. They can design this from the ground up. And I'm hoping that they will not conform to what we expect to see in a car. Because I'm, I personally believe that electric vehicles should be the start of something completely different, something new. It should take us away from what we've known up until this point, and it should allow us to uh, explore the best aerodynamics, the best seating positions, the, the, the best cabin space, how to make that the most enjoyable space possible for us as drivers and passengers. The car doesn't need to have a bonnet at the front, a boot at the back, and a steering wheel, depending where you are in the world, on the left or right. Why not change it? Why not make it something different? And I think, as amazing as Tesla have been, and as much as Tesla have brought us kicking and screaming into the future, uh, I think they very much have still been conformist. They still make cars that look like cars. Perhaps Dyson can learn from that, and perhaps Dyson, with their history and experience, can do something different. I hope so, I really do. It'll be really nice to see, is this a glimpse into the future? And Hopefully, on the back of it, they'll do very well. So that's where we are at the moment. Probably not an awful lot of new information for you, but I'm hopefully it's just brought a few things together because I didn't realize just how much was going on until I started researching it. So I found it quite interesting and hopefully you did too. So as and when we hear a bit more, obviously I'll keep you updated. Uh, but for now, hopefully you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, remember to like and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, you take care and I'll see you soon.